Hi, this is Kathy from Craft with Kathy. Thanks for joining me this evening. I'm coming at you live from the suburbs west of Chicago, where it's actually snowing here right now. It's 23 degrees. Kind of hard to believe that spring is just around the corner, and here we're getting a little bit more snow. What can you do, right? I'm going to take a moment here to share this with my VIP group. If you would um, like to share this with somebody that you think would be interested in it, please, of course, um, feel free to do that. Okay, you got that all set up great um I'm not doing the project that I was intending tonight um, I dropped a hint about it yesterday and um, things just were went a little sideways today so I just I can't do it I'm doing something else but I wanted to show you what um, I made this the other day I made a couple little um, refrigerator magnets using the gold digger transfers. These are just um, five different images. And these are little mini frames. I added polka dots here just with um, one I used our silver chalk marker, the other one I used our bright white. And then I put little stick-on magnets to the back, on the back on our little mini frame. So these will attach right to our little our, our stainless steel refrigerator. Anyway, when I chalked this little chip, I had a little bit of bleed in here right under the bar of the um, the barbell or the the post of the barbell whatever this thing would be called the thing that the weights actually sit on and I meant to talk about how to get rid of that I said I'm gonna wait till it dries and then um, show you how to to clean that up and I actually forgot all about it so you just wait till it dries and you take your um, Oh my goodness, I call it a pokey tool. I can't pull pokey tool. I can't think of the actual name for it. Anyway, you take one end is like kind of almost like a needle. The other end is like a very, very tiny little squeegee. And you just basically scrape, gently scrape the edge where your bleed was and clean up any issues that you have. It Here I have a little bit at the top, I think. It might actually have been the design of the T, but I could actually just scrape that away like that and straighten it out so that's one way of fixing um, something after it is actually dried so just wanted to share that um, as this is International Women's Month I think these transfers are absolutely adorable for um, little inspirational messages for all women but especially young girls remember strong is the new pretty right okay what I want to do with this tonight is I ended up getting this um, in the mail this morning. Thank you, Sarah, very much. I won this. So I thought, oh, I'm going to actually put this on a t-shirt. So that is what I'm doing tonight. And I was thinking of using my gold ink. And I actually grabbed my copper. And I, when I opened it up, I said, you know what? It's too dark for gold. Aha, it's my copper. I turned it upside down to see the name. And I thought, you know what? The copper will look really nice on this navy blue anyway. So that's what I'm going to do. Couple things with ink versus paste. Ink is permanent and you need to heat set it. Number one. So if you want to do something on fabric that you want to be permanent, you want to use ink. If you want to do something on ceramic, that you want to be permanent use ink but remember that your ink needs to be heat set and you could do that with an iron on fabric on clothing just think you could use our transfers on t-shirts on jeans on jean jackets just about anything on um, quilting squares um, I've seen some really cute things where um, a pair of jeans that are cuffed up at the bottom have a design um, or a pattern just on the cuff 
and then there's a matching t-shirt or a jean jacket that continues with another transfer in the same group or the same family with another part of the design and I think that looks really sharp. So ink is if it's permanent and when you're using ink on fabric you do not fuzz because you want the transfer to lay down on the fabric and have a very very strong um, adhesion to it so no reason no reason to fuzz it to diminish the um, stickiness we want it very sticky and you also need to be very careful with your hands you do not want to accidentally dip your finger in the jar of ink and accidentally go to pick it up or lift up your transfer and have ink on your fingers because the ink is permanent. Even if we haven't yet heat set it, if you smudge or get the ink on your fabric in an area that you don't intend to, um, you need to remove it as quickly as possible and hopefully it's fine. But I have occasionally smudged um, something so I try to always do a finger check before I lift up my transfer. With all that said, I'm going to just hop right in there. Hi Deb, how are you? Everyone's cool here. Pull the transfer off, and it is chalking is my cardio. And I'm going to just center this. Now I'm going to use the neckline for my guide. And I have a mat underneath here. Oops, it's a little crooked. I have a um, ink mat underneath my shirt to act as a barrier between this layer of the shirt and the back of the shirt. And you can see my little mat here, it's adhesive, it sticks, fabric sticks to it nice and strongly so that it doesn't move or scoot while I'm applying the ink. And it acts as a barrier so that it doesn't go through the, the ink doesn't go through the silk screen, through the first layer of fabric and into the back layer of the fabric. So you want that barrier to protect it from the ink bleeding through. And then all you need to do is let your ink set, um, your project set and dry, and then heat set it once it's dry. And we'll talk about heat setting in a moment, making sure I don't have any smudges of ink, of the copper ink on my fingers. And when I use the ink, I try to go in one direction and I'm going from top to bottom here. And I won't be wiping it off as thinly or removing as much as I would if um, I was doing this on a chalkboard because I am putting it a little bit thicker and a little bit more gentle when I um, smooth it out because I want it to absorb into the fabric beneath it. So I am still going over and removing any lines that I have, but I'm still leaving a little bit thicker of a layer. And notice I'm just going top to bottom. So I think I've got enough removed off of here. And I'm going to put it back in my jar. No sense wasting it, right? Just return it to my jar. And maybe this is something that's done better away from the fabric. Want to make sure my fingers are nice and clean. And I'm going to lift this up and slowly to look at it to make sure that I don't have any um, areas that I've missed. And Always lift from the top, the bottom, the left or the right. Never pull or tug on the corners. Now see, it didn't go all the way through there. I'm a little light, so I'm going to add some more back in and go over it again. I didn't give it enough time to actually go through my silk screen. So... Now, I saw somewhere around on this shirt where I'm working right now, there was actually a, a sticky tag that I pulled off that left a little bit of a impression on the shirt, but I figured it'll wash out. I haven't pre-washed this or anything. So I'm going to press a little bit harder. I just don't want to be scraping it off. So just make sure I've got everything here. Taking my time. I'm going to remove a little bit of the ink, clean up those lines, and take another look at it. I did go a little bit overboard with my ink here. And let me 
me take another look. Check my fingers. Ah, that looks much better, except my little line over here is a little light, so I'm going to come back over there and do it one more time. A little bit depends upon how porous, or I want to say porous, how absorbent your fabric is going to be because it needs to absorb the ink. And this is not like vinyl. Once this is heat set, it will not crack, it will not peel off, it will not disappear or flake off on you. It actually bonds with the fabric, it's ink, and it is permanently dyed your fabric to the color of the ink. Finger check again. Felt like I got something on myself. No, I guess I'm fine. Okay. Oh, that looks much, much nicer. There we go. How quick, simple, and easy was that? Now, I'm going to set this aside to dry. Once it is dry, I will remove this ink mat from the back because this ink mat is made out of plastic with an adhesive on the front. And then I will take a piece of parchment paper, take the waxy side of the parchment paper, lay it flat down on top of my um ink image. Remember I've removed, don't forget, remove your ink mat. And then I will use an iron or a heat press to make this image permanent. With an iron, you want to set your iron to whatever fabric you're working on, to the heat for that. Um, put obviously the parchment paper down and then iron, keep your iron moving for four minutes. When you've done one side, Take your thing, flip it inside out, or the t-shirt you turn inside out. Put the um, parchment paper, you could use the same piece of parchment paper again, the waxy side down on top of the ink, and iron again for, a four, for four minutes. Just keep your iron moving. Now the four minutes is a suggested time. Look at your fabric and make sure that your iron is not too hard, hot, that it starts scorching the fabric or anything like that. Ink is very, very easy to use, and all it needs is this extra step. And like I said, this is not like vinyl. It will not peel, crack, or flake off. It is permanent once it is heat set. So how cool and how fun is that? If you use a heat press instead of an iron, just go to the heat press, press manufacturer settings for the particular um, type of fabric. And it's a little bit quicker than ironing. That's it. Simple, easy way to use ink on fabric. You could use it on t-shirts, you could use it on jeans, on jean jackets, on muslin squares, on cotton, on um, basically any kind of fabric that has a low nap. You wouldn't want to put this on fabric that has, um, like if you were inking uh, dish towels or anything, you wouldn't want to do something with a very thick nap dish towel because of course the nap could shift just think of this carpet when you vacuum a carpet or you put your hand across a carpet, how you get that little image with the, the thickness of the carpet or whatever, um, the distortion. So other than worrying about the nap, you could put it on any fabric. I've actually done velour pillowcases and they've been fine, but they haven't been really, really thick nap. So, but they're beautiful. Just some ideas there. Thank you so much for joining me and watching this quick little tutorial tonight. I surely do appreciate it. Have a great evening. See you soon.